And actually, I started when I was nine years old as a TV host. If at six years old, she wants to be a YouTuber and I had no idea people were actually making money from it. I was like, okay, I'm doing a piss poor job as a parent. And they have like uh, three slots. They got two kids. They just need one more. And he recommends me. My name is Samara Osai Asari. I am a 12 year old media personality. I actually started out as a TV host and I have a platform where I bridge the gap between the continent of Africa and the rest of the world by interviewing celebrities and entrepreneurs and also inspiring my audience to live out their divine purpose. And I am Stacey Osai Asari, mom and momager of Sama Time. And yeah, that's just basically it. I'm here to assist. <laughs> Diversified game. Learn how to start, run, and sustain your business. Hey, it's Kellen. And you guys, you heard it. They said it better than I can say it. I got SNS, mom and daughter. <laughs> and they're going to give us the game on how... A child at 12 years old has a TV show. She's from Brooklyn, but she's oh, no, in Ghana. The, <laughs> the Bronx, sorry. Oh, I don't want to start a beef. I don't want to start hey, a beef. Put the boogie down. Yes, put the boogie down. Yes, yes. But, but we want to get into, because Mama has some island. I believe it's St. Kitt, St. Thomas. St. Thomas. Yeah, don't, don't have me get in a fight. Uh, but, um, yes. We want to know how did this happen and how you guys listening out there don't have to wait till you're 18 or 45 or 50 to start your dream. So, ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you for thank coming you. on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This means a lot to me. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. And, you know, there's some people in Ghana that I've interviewed and that's just how the algorithm, it hit us. And so I just want to know, what age did you start? You're 12 now, but you've been acting like you've been doing this for, since you came out the womb. Well, I really appreciate that comment. Thank you so much for that. And actually, I started when I was nine years old as a TV host in Ghana, West Africa, because I, I said earlier, I'm originally from the Bronx, but I have always been a very inquisitive person. A lot of my questions had a why in it. And so because of that, I had actually told my parents that I wanted to have my own YouTube platform where I got to interview people. They didn't take me too seriously, but a few years later, we actually ended up in Ghana. And then from there, that's where my story really took place. Wow, there's a lot to unpack in there. But before we go too deep, mom, when she said, I want to have a YouTube platform in this Babylon of a United States divided <laughs> snakes, um, and you didn't, you and your, your husband didn't take it too serious, what made you say, okay, did she just bug you enough to say, this is me? Did you just see it in her because she had the it factor? What was it? So funny enough, um, none of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope I didn't she, bug you too much. Um, and she was six years old at the time. She had just come home from her kindergarten graduation. And she went and said, hey, I want to interview you guys. And we were shocked by it because, well, we never heard her say anything about this. So she goes and she takes my husband's cell phone and she starts recording herself and she starts asking us questions. And I'm like, oh, she's serious. <laughs> so he was like, well, then Samara is basically saying like, okay, well, you know what? I want to be a YouTuber. So when she said that, I, no offense to the YouTube content creators out there, I didn't even know content creating was even called that. I just thought that if at six years old, she wants to be a YouTuber and I had no idea people were actually making money from it. I was like, okay, I'm doing a piss poor job as a parent. If this is what you want to do with your life. <laughs> so she's like, no, mommy, there's Mr. Beast out there. And fast forward, I just found out who Mr. Beast is like a few weeks ago. <laughs> I didn't know it was like a big thing or a big deal, but we were like, okay, well, whatever. So we let her go around interviewing us with the cell phone and we'd answer her questions. Questions were nonstop. Why was like- An uh, everyday thing. Yeah, it was an everyday thing. It was just consistent. It just never went away. <laughs> so two years fast forward from when she was six years old, COVID happens. And my husband, just to give some context to your audience- I am of Caribbean American background. My husband is Ghanaian. So uh, I've been talking to my husband. We've been together for 17 years. And I was like, hey, like we should really go to Ghana. And when COVID happened, it was like the best idea and opportunity to actually try it. So we go over there, we relocate. Uh, one of his younger brothers is there. 
He's a media personality. And he gets this opportunity from a big, one of the big networks out there, TV3. And they're like, they're hosting, like trying to do like a new kids news show, kind of like a CNN type of situation. And they have like uh, three slots. They got two kids. They just need one more. And he recommends me, which was actually pretty surprising for me at the moment, because I remember the day that he had brought it up to my parents. And I was like, Ooh, this would be a beautiful opportunity. And because he was able to recommend we we actually went to the interview. They asked me a few questions. I answered it. And I guess they liked me a lot. And I ended up being the youngest TV host in Ghana. And working on the set was amazing. I got to learn new things. I got to learn how a TV show was run. I got to learn, like, how to be a TV host, all the things that go into it, like the studying, reading off of teleprompters, the different cameras, different angles, how, like, every second you have to make sure that your face looks fine or looks presentable to be on camera because you never know when the camera is going to switch on you. I learned all these different things. So a huge thank you to TV3, a huge thank you to Kids Arena, a huge thank you to Ghana for that. I really appreciate that. Now, when you started, (laughs) yeah, how did you, you know, learn how to ask such eloquent questions? Like, you've been in finance. I saw you talking with the woman from CNBC. I'm a dyslexic, so I'm going to say it slow so I make sure I don't (laughs) mess it up. But um, how did, you know, how did that skill come? Are you just, you know, a very nosy person like myself? I wouldn't particularly say nosy. (laughs) At least I wouldn't define myself as that. But um, actually, that started for the Africa Bitcoin conference two years ago. And funny enough, that's how Sama Time started, because I wanted to interview everyone at the Africa Bitcoin conference. I wanted to get an idea about what Bitcoin was, since going back to me being very inquisitive, I wanted to know more about the world. So because of that, I had asked questions that I would feel I would learn something from. I feel like I would be able to use that information. So I was able to interview the creator, the founder of Twitter, Mr. Jack Dorsey. And I was able to ask him about Bitcoin, ask him about financial literacy and to be able to teach him about Ghana since that has always been my passion. That's how. Hello, everyone. Join us on an exciting journey with Explore the World Cameroon. London as Sydney will take you explore Cameroon, the heart of Africa. Experience the vibrant culture, nature, and traditions from Yaoundé Market to Rainforest Adventures. Every page is a new discovery. Enjoy the Cameroonian food, music, and wildlife with our explorers. This book is a true celebration of Cameroon spirit. Get your copy now. Available on Amazon, Barnes and & Noble, and through your library and bookstores via Ingram Spark. Don't miss this adventure. When you're doing your dream and you're young enough to make mistakes, you're young enough even to volunteer your time, how did you learn the business side of it? And mom, how did you, you know, if you've never done TV before, how yep. did you guys learn the business side of it? That's a good question. We're actually learning now. We're still learning. <laughs> Two years yeah. in, we're learning. Um, as as you go along and you meet all of these wonderful celebrities, and they're curious about the fact of, wow, there's a young family that's relocated from America to Ghana. You know, how are you guys making it? We tell them our story, and then we ask questions. It's like, okay, um, we're doing this now. What? What next? Yep. So along the journey, we've learned tidbits like you need to trademark your brand you need an epk yeah you need an epk um now you probably need like a talent manager i've been everything under the sun (laughs) i just the only thing was i needed to learn more about it so i think my answer to your question is i am still learning we are still learning and this is a project it's um is it a just mom and daughter project or is your husband really involved in it as well and what is his part oh it's the three musketeers honey yep <laughs> so i manage her um i handle her social medias i handle almost everything my husband is the person who will come with the camera he really likes to stay behind the scenes i really like to stay behind the scenes as well but i don't really get a chance to yeah <laughs> but 
Um, my husband, he does the editing and the videography. That's his lane. And he's also my teacher because I'm learning how to edit along with him. Okay. So now, good. was editing in TV something that he was already doing before you had your TV show? No. 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 So th the dynamics are very interesting on her paternal side. Um from her father to uncles and aunt, they have a radio background. They have an industry background to an extent. Um, but the editing was something new that we had to learn on the fly when Samara decided that she wants to now interview celebrities and she wants to put it on YouTube. And it's like, okay, we're kind of like dinosaurs. So we're like, all right, how do we figure out this whole YouTube thing? I'm a little less of a dinosaur, yeah, but still so a dinosaur. It's, it's a learning curve. I'm still learning. We're We're still going through the journey. Was any of this for either one of you scary to know that, wow, I'm going on TV, a whole, you know, not just a nation, but the world now, no matter where you are, people are streaming shows, even in Asia, and they know what, you know, uh, Ghana movies look like, they know Nollywood, and everybody is, you know, intertwined on this, this internet. Was it scary to say, the whole world is about to see my work? Or was it exciting, like, yay? I, I just want to know what, like, or is it a mix of all that? If you let me answer that, I'll let you tell your part all the way. <laughs> For me, it's been a myriad of emotions, but I don't think it's quite hit me that everybody's going to be watching. In my mind, we're, I'm still in our own little cocoon, our own little bubble. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we're going to push this out and who knows who'll see it. You know, I, I don't, I don't think I've grasped the gravity of what's happening. I'm just, I think I'm so in it that I haven't taken a step back to see or feel how somebody else on the outside might feel when they're watching it or if they ever watch it. I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I would also agree with what she said. Um, when you put it like that, that definitely sounds very, it, de it definitely sounds, let me say, a bit scary, but also very exciting for me. Like my mom said, I'm so much in the moment that I don't even realize that other people could be watching it because I just love what I do. I love being able to talk to people, being able to learn something new, being able to teach my culture that I don't even realize like, hey, this may be shown all over the world. The only time when I when that really hits me is if I'm going to my YouTube analytics and I'm like, that's crazy. I didn't know that, let's say, Cote d'Ivoire is watching or Germany or let's say um, one of my recent ones was the UK. So when that happens, I'm usually very excited. I'm glad to know that people actually care about watching and that they care learning more about my country. And you are teaching, I hear you, you know, teaching people tree, um, you know, giving them the, the welcomes and, and it's a beautiful thing. Have you got into where you've like, I'm famous, where when you're eating and people are coming and tapping on your shoulder, which when I'm with clients, I'm also security sometimes because I'm, I'm just <laughs> like that. You're going to be safe with me. And so I'm like, you know, we always have to pick our places wisely because when you're with people who are popular or famous, however you want to use that word, it can be scary because you don't know if it's friend or foe. Have you guys mm -hmm. tapped in? I don't think we've gotten to that point yet. I don't, I don't think we feel famous. I can say that there's been times in Ghana, we've gone grocery shopping and, and somebody would stop her and say, aren't you the girl from uh, Kids Arena, yes. 23? And you're doing a great job, Sama. I keep, you know, representing. Um, I think it, it kind of hit me a little bit last year when she went viral for um, Hip Hop 50th, when she was teaching her culture to like Nas, Lauren Hill, and all of those other people. And I remember my husband did the video. I put the video out and I went to sleep. I was in the States at the time. TV3, uh, one of the producers called my phone and said, Madame Stacy, please wake up. And I was like, yes, what's going on? Your daughter has gone viral. Our girl is on TV. She's everywhere. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and because I don't really understand the internet, I'm like, viral what? Where? What are you talking about? And she's like, hey, change your settings. Oh, change, change, change. Go, go, go and figure it out. <laughs> so I go and I look. And I'm getting calls from my husband's friends and everybody's like, like I, the the out 
four of love was just insanity to me because I, I it actually scared me because I'd never seen numbers jump so high. It did. <laughs> like I was freaked out. Like I literally put the phone down and walked away because it, it was too much. But over the course of days, we would look at the messages that were coming in. And I literally spent like crying. five days crying um, because they were saying, our girl is bringing Ghana to the world. Some people we will never see or meet. She is able to teach them our culture. She didn't just go for herself. She took us with her. And I thought that was like one of the most beautiful things I'd ever encountered on this journey. I'd like to add to that. One of the most heartfelt moments for me actually was when we were in the airport, actually. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady, but before we went to like the boarding space where you go and sit, um, there was this lady that was checking us. And then she's like, you're that girl from TV, right? And then I'm like, yeah, I am. She's like, I want you to know, come back to Ghana. Don't stay away too long because we need somebody like you. The fact that you're able to go to different places and then carry Ghana on your back everywhere that you go, speak to so many different people, it means a lot to us. Please don't stay anywhere else too long and not come back to Ghana. Ghana needs you. That part had really touched me and I was like, wow, I'm really doing something for people. So I haven't really got like those moments where people kept on tapping on my shoulder like, hey, are you this? Hey, are you that? But the times when they do, it means a lot to me. Enjoy these times. These are going to be the purest and most precious moments, even in the faith based industry. You know, you have ministers who are tired of people sometimes because they've just <laughs> been, you know, been demanded so much and that, you know, you're doing your passion. Now, have you written down, you know, your dreams? I know you want to have a media company. Have you written down how you want it to look and what you may, you know, how you may want to change the game? Is it with young people or is it with everybody, even old people who are on their way out giving life lessons before they transition? I'm still figuring a lot of that stuff out, but I definitely want everybody to be included because I say because of some of the people that have been able to help me out on my journey without them, without them opening up doors for me, I wouldn't have been able to do what I'm able to do. So I would love to include them as giving back, but also open doors to the younger generation because I know that they're going to continue and they're going to keep the light. Now, Right now, someone's listening. Most of my people are listeners. Um, you guys go over to YouTube. You will see the mother and daughter team. Give it, give it some likes, shares, and all that good stuff. But thank you. Thank you. Yes, but you know when you think about the next steps, I know you know being on a TV network is great. You have your YouTube. Do you want to do any hosting, um, TED talks, professional speaking? Where where do you see yourself going from here? Funny enough, when you mentioned hosting, I would love to give a quick shout out to the Bronx Children's Museum because I have been able to be their MC for two years straight. Last year and this year, being able to host the event and being able to speak to like over 200 people, I think. was it? Yeah. So she hosts an event um, once a year for them as the uh, Bronx Children's Museum's gala. Yeah, at the gala. The so there's a lot of important people that sit in the room. And she basically is their spokesperson for why they should give their funding and contribute to the longevity of teaching children in the Bronx. Yes. And they've really done well with helping her. Um, to, I want to backtrack because you asked a question about writing down stuff. Yes. Um, I was raised in a church all my life. So I, there's a scripture where it says, um, write the write vision, the vision down, down, make down and make it plain. Uh -huh. So um, what I've, I can say from my, on my end, what I've been doing from the moment I was expecting to give birth to Samara, I've been writing down a few small things and I've been asking God to just lead us on this journey or whatever it may look like. Let us stay open to that. And um, I would have never guessed in a million years going to Ghana would have been part of that journey. And her just by happenstance, well, from what it looks like to me is happenstance, but I'm sure it was divine purpose um, that she ends up on TV. And then from there, she branches out and she starts Sama time. So I'm in the process of journaling everything that she's going through right now um, from beginning to where she is now. Um, and just thanking God and asking him to continue to provide you know, laborers and for us to have the discernment to know who those laborers are when they come our way. And, you know, for us to do something, because I think what she's doing is going to be bigger than Samatan, the platform. 
Uh, it's going to be something that extends way beyond her. And my prayer is that it gives hope to every age dynamic on the face of the planet. And they're, you know, because they've watched her, they feel like they can go and pursue their dreams too. Yes. There's so <laughs> much. You think about if we would have started our passion, our dreams at 12, you know, I wanted to write books at 10 and 12, but it cost $10,000. Who had $10,000 for a kid to write a book? Now you can yeah. write a book. Now AI can. Now you can do video. So what I tell my kids and any kids listening and even old kids that might be, you know, 65, but still <laughs> kiddish, start now and get yeah. with a, a team. Maybe you don't have... Yeah. A, great parents to help you, but there's somebody, a librarian, there's somebody, and that's what this whole podcast is to show you how people put their dreams together. Now with, you know, Smart, you are like a, a, a Toastmasters expert. Did you ever oh, go you. to Toastmasters? Did you do like the National Speakers Association? How did you, you know, get just so good at speaking and giving your opinion and not worrying what anybody else was going to think? I guess that may be a child trait because children, they usually speak their mind, or at least children that have the environment to speak their mind, they usually do that and don't care what anybody else thinks. But for me, I realized that sometimes my opinion and whatever I say may actually spark something to change something and make it positive. So I'm never really scared about what I may say because I know that it could spark a beautiful change. And also, thank you so much for the compliment. I don't look at myself as like such a fearless person because sometimes I do get a little nervous. But thank you so much for like saying that I was able to do it fearlessly because that means I accomplished what I I'm going to give you a funny story. So it, this brings to mind when she first started on the network and TV. Oh, yeah. I swore we were going to get deported. Yes. <laughs> so, deported and fired. <laughs> so there was a segment where um, the three hosts of Kids Arena had to join. I guess like their version of what you would say, good morning, America. Yes. So their top, uh, their top TV three presenters, the, the more senior people. So they invited kids arena and the other kids from the other kids shows that they had. And they chose <laughs> three particular kids. Yeah. I'm going to let you do it. But I remember they decided to ask Samara about politics <laughs> And I remember sitting in the corner and I was like, Jesus, we're going to get deported today. They picked the wrong child. This girl is going to go in. Because <laughs> politics go and government is like really my passion. So I remember, I forgot the specific question that they asked about. I think it was like, what they, like, what does, what needs to be changed in Ghana? Yeah. And I was like, what is the number of things? <laughs> Our roads aren't fixed properly. There are gutters open. There are lights out. And I don't appreciate that. We shouldn't be living in those conditions. <laughs> and I just went on and on and on, hitting all those points where, I don't know, maybe it was like all the frustration that I faced before coming to light through those answers. And then I saw my mom's face. She looks scared. I was cringing. I was like, yeah, today's the day we're getting to play. Yeah. She really thought that we were going to have to go back, come back to the U.S. She's like, nah, there is no way we're coming back. I was like, and the president should do this and this and that and this. So in Ghana, I imagine this is how it is in probably most of the countries in the continent. Um, children are more or less to be seen and not heard. Yes. And... I know my mom is from the South, so that's a big thing in South Carolina, but it's even more tangible in Ghana. In Ghana. So when she started doing that, I was like, yeah, we're going to get the point. <laughs> she literally <laughs> hit her face in the book. She like was I was lying. hiding my face. I was like, oh my God. But I can hear um, from one of the senior presenters when they had an earpiece, they were like, no, keep it going. Keep asking her. <laughs> Make us talk more. We want to hear more. <laughs> so. Wow. Uh, much to my surprise, you know, we did not get deported, <laughs> but I think it sparked a change because I saw another kid presenter who's very popular out there where she was being interviewed and she was like, you know what, I think Ghana needs to have a change. It's positive for us to be able to speak our minds without being disrespectful. So I think you're seeing a shift happening yes. out there. Well, since you brought up politics 
and I wasn't, I, I wasn't, and you, and you love it. You're talking to someone who I tell everyone, don't follow me and go get your bachelor's in political science and do your master's and, and, you know, whatever I did it in mass communication. Don't do that. There's other things to do, but since yeah. you like politics, <laughs> can you ever see yourself running? Because Ghana has not had a female president. There's been multiple female presidents on the continent, but not enough. Mexico, wait, where am I? Mexico, Mexico. <laughs> just I'm I'm a resident of Mexico and America. Mexico. Hope, yeah, America. Hope, oh yeah, all these are countries that we have ties to. One of them I can't tell you how to That's on fine. air, but uh, but um, <laughs> um. You know, America, hopefully we'll get a female president. There is yeah. a different energy and wisdom that come with women, and it's overdue for America. Yeah. Do you see yourself running ever for politics, and what country will you pick, and why? Because you have options. That is true. Um, actually... I don't know. I mean, I remember I was asked that question and then I reflected and then I'm like, I want to say yes, but I want to say no. Because also you have the whole weight of a whole nation upon you and they were relying on you to like make the country better. And because of that, you have so much pressure on you. And I don't know how I'll be able to take that pressure because I know my limits. And then also you have to look at it as like, it's not just the president's job to do everything. The community also has to help out too. But how do you make the community like help out themselves without them looking at you a certain type of way and saying that you're lazy, you're not trying to help us? So because of all that, I've thought about it and I really don't know. I really don't know if I want to do politics for now. I may lean more on the side of saying no. For now. For now. <laughs> but I will consider it. I will consider it. And and I say that because you are so bold and that's not a Thank rare you. thing for, for any, any, you know, black folks should be bold, but we still have in West Africa where, you know, when you say children are be seen or heard, there's still some, they think women are like children and they should mm -hmm. be talking out. So the fact that you do have the confidence to speak out and say something when there's so many others say, no, no, don't say nothing. Just, you know, let it be. It's mm -hmm. and I say politics because this oh, thing we is heard a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's a dirty game as a ditty party on the late night. I mean, it's just you know, they go hand in hand. So I just ask, um, so the audience can pray for you. If you say, Yeah, I do want to go, even if she doesn't want to go into it, you guys <laughs> pray for and pray for us all because we we need it. What is with your the success? And the, you're going to, the best is yet to come. Like you're just starting. Thank you. What is a community give back? You're welcome. What is a community give back that you're doing or that you would like to do in the future? Mm, that's a very, very good question. That's a really good question. Um, one thing I would love to do is that if I see that, I would actually love to become a mentor. Because if I see that anyone wants to take up being a media personality or may have any questions about it, I would love to help them out. Because then I remember when I first started and it was hard for me, I'm like, what am I doing? I remember when we were in the days like we were stuck to the phones and we weren't using any cameras that we were trying to find any little mic recording piece that we could get. We had to battle with the stuff not working with the audio being scrapped with the files being corrupted i remember all of that and i want to help anyone out that is facing those problems too i also want to see if i can do gift backs if anything um i have to really look more well i have to really how should i say it i have to really think about that i have to like look more into that but that's what i like to do so far Okay. And you have plenty of time, again, being able to do it now where, you know, once you have your bills and you want to build your parents uh, another home and build your home, because, you know, in Africa, you got to build it from scratch, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have plenty of time. But, you know, with that, do you think about, you know, with mentoring, I'm always thinking, OK, well, that's going to be some paid mentorship because then everybody comes. It's kind of like when you come into a West African country, everybody sees you from the States and they see you. And sometimes they see you as a big money bag because you mm. can. <laughs> and it's, you know, um, how for you now? 
Howdy, buddy, but I need something small. Do you think about the people that you're going to be able to hire and how you're going to be able to not just monetize your YouTube and other other platform, but you need money. The scripture says money answers all things. You're mm -hmm. not to be in love with it, but, you know, have you thought about that part? Because you are going to be hiring, you know, and firing, unfortunately, it comes with it. But, you know, have you thought about like, how you're just going to manage, you know, the next at least maybe five years of your life. We'll start small. Mm, that's a, also a very good question. Um, I haven't really even thought about hiring yet because someone has told me that I have to learn how to do everything myself first before hiring other people. So I know the way it's supposed to be done. So because of that, I'm more focused on knowing how to be able to be in front of the camera, be behind the camera know the ins and outs and everything. So I haven't really thought about hiring yet. Okay. How are you doing all of this in school? Are you homeschooled? <laughs> now that's a very important question. I am actually in school and being able to juggle all of that. It's very interesting for me. I look back and I'm like, wow, I do a lot. I do a <laughs> lot. But also a big thank you to my parents because they're able to like, okay, maybe you can use this time to rest. You can use other times to work on this stuff. We're not going to rush you to do anything. We're going to give you time to recoup, time to be a kid. And I really appreciate that. So how I'm able to balance all of that, let's say that I, because in school I have homework and then it's due on Friday. They give it to you on Monday. I finish it Monday, Monday afternoon when, when I get back home. And then from there, I start uploading videos. I do everything I'm supposed to do. And that's how I juggle things. And then also my school is gracious enough to realize that what I'm doing, I'm not doing anything bad. I'm actually doing something really cool. So they give me space to be able to do these things and be able to come to school at certain times as long as I get my work done. Okay. Is this a, um, a private school? Are you in a traditional you know, um, type school, those who know, like, and I know you're past the primary stage, you're probably like <laughs> in like middle, you know, um, but, you know, is it a specialty school where or an American school where they, they get it, you know, kids are doing things or it's more traditional? I've actually been able to do both a private school and public school, public school being over here and private school being in Ghana. It was quite an experience for me. Being back in Ghana, they were a little more strict about it because like some sometimes I would be out for a period of time. And because of that, I lost some of my instructional hours, even though I was able to make it up by my test scores and my classwork. And also over here, being in public school, they give you a little more leniency as long as you have good grades and as long as you show up every other time. So being over there in Ghana, learning how to balance me being like regular Samara, then summertime, being like a super Superman, superwoman was definitely interesting because I would have more work to do over there and I would have to balance it a little more. It was definitely something. Okay. I don't want to give the game on everything because you have your own YouTube, which we're going to put the links in the description and we want Thank people you. to go over there. But I do want to know, because I'm probably, I tell my kids, the reason why you guys can't come in front of the camera too much is I would be Joe Jackson. I mean, I'd be <laughs> running you from here to here. It's what I've done for the last 20 years. So this is just, I, I know, and I've never actually wanted kids to be in this business in America, even myself. Oh, yeah. If I wanted fame, I would want to be in Africa because it's just a different algorithm and vibe that you get in Africa, unlike, you know, here. But is there a product that we can expect maybe 2025? Maybe you have a, a children's book or, you know, a, a how-to book because you could teach in college right now because there's exactly. kids just trying to learn what you've already done so that they should really give you some credit now for that so it can go a little <laughs> yeah, faster I really appreciate that. <laughs> but you know, any product about, you know the funny thing about it is it's like everybody's been saying the same thing 
everybody's been saying, you should do a children's book. You should have a book out, a how-to book, telling people about your journey and like everything that you've learned. So all I can say is stay tuned. I can't promise anything, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. And and if not, you know, stay tuned. I'm going to go a little deeper because I'm I get really <laughs> nosy, you know, and it could be a children's book because that's just something that people do. We write them London and Sydney.com. You guys go check that out. If you're listening, stop before you go type it in. But even things like in Africa, you know, I have the Maasai make me these and mm -hmm. my name, my name is in them. And it's like when people see these, they say, I just want a piece of Africa because they say I probably will never be able to go. And I say, wow. why, do you, why do you say that? And, you know, for various reasons. Right. Some people don't want to go, but they love Africa, but they're scared maybe of flying. Um product, bows, earrings. I could just see it on you when you are doing your TED Talk, when you are at Toastmasters and they're awarding you with whatever award they give you and the NSA. Never forget the NSA. Um, that's where you learn how to really get paid. But I, I just see it on you. So, you know, we'll stay tuned. We'll follow. Let the people know where they can follow you. I could go for three hours like Joe Rogan. But oh, I want But no, but I but we could always we we could do this again and I want to talk to you guys off air um about some 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 other things briefly because I want them to really check you out and I want to be able to do I want to kind of see your journey. I've interviewed one other child and and and, and I say that he was 8 years old, Christian the Truth oh. Jones. No, was he what? 8? I heard about him. Y yeah, this is the and second time I'm hearing, and and and, and your daughter's going to interview him. He's now, you know, he's maybe three years older. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like we need to put these talented people together because whatever the parents are doing, y'all are doing. Y'all need to write your own book on this, right? <laughs> you How say I'm doing. I don't even know I'm doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It, well, well, you your mother's from the South, so I know my, my grandmother and my mother um, from Arkansas. And one thing about what we grew up is, you know, the children not seen, not heard. If you were heard, it better be outside or that mm. bell or whatever else was coming. So you can write a book to say, because I have, you know, this child, this gifted child, and she definitely is gifted. I mean, you're dealing with a genius. Um um, you there's your book and your husband's book. You know, we never want to forget Pa. Pa is a very important key player. Oh, yeah. integral, <laughs> very integral. I mean, he's but he likes to like be hidden. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm starting a rumor because I'm gonna say because who he is, and they're gonna say, oh, What do you mean? You I'm gonna say, <laughs> Yeah, I'm starting a rumor. It's yeah. already it's starting. I'm gonna say, Yeah, well, if you had that much money, you wouldn't really want to be known either. You know, <laughs> you gotta have the police travel. You know, people don't understand oh, wow. when you're in Africa and you have so much money, the police have to follow you and it's a con coy or con yeah, cave or whatever. Way. Convoy, thank you. I'm a dyslexic, so I have to, you know, and uh, I'll start talking. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So let the people know where they can find you, and Mama, let them know that they need to go through you. Even though she answered my my Instagram message, that you got to mm -hmm. go through Mother to do this properly. Yep. And and if I hear anything otherwise, let me know because we make house calls. <laughs> All right. So you can follow me on Sama Time 12, S-A-M-A-T-I-M-E and the number 12 on all socials, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, especially Instagram and YouTube. Those I am really trying to pump up. So please and thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I check all the DMs. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I live on her socials, so I, I'm very aware of what's going on. So, yeah. Um, Literally anything that is sent to me, I report it to her. Yes. So um, not only that, but I'm going to just in case parents are watching this particular segment, um, I want to just say this. It's easy for me to allow Samara to do what she's doing because she's also a straight A student. She aces everything. Um, school is not hard for her. Nope. It, uh academics come very, very easy to her. And that I think is why the institutions, especially here in, in the States, it makes it easier for her to travel. They're okay with it. Um, and to be honest, she's the only one in her school doing what she's doing. 
extracurricular activities wise. Um, on top of all, and the being a student funny council. thing about it is, and she's in student council too. So nobody actually, except for like the teachers and the principal, nobody else knows that she does what she does. That's why I brought up Superman because like <laughs> I'm Clark in school and then i'm superman outside of school or a super lady yeah super lady i like that you are you are clarissa <laughs> i'm sorry uh, super sama yeah yeah i believe in the i had the comics i'm old so don't let this hairline <laughs> fool you um you know and so i remember the comics there was a super girl there was you know there was whatever a lot of people and genders are, are in the comic. So I love it. And I hope that the African Union sees this because I could definitely see you speaking at one of their events or even if they fly you to one of their, you know, Ethiopia. When you go to that African Union, it's massive. The other ones are, are, are grande, too. But I can just <laughs> see the future is so bright and that you're representing <laughs> not just, you know, two cultures, but also the Caribbean. That's yes. a big Oh, God bless so you. So we're just you. now teetering into that. Um, yep. I think the focus has been predicated more so on Ghana. on Ghana, because when you live there, we've lived there for four years now. Um, there, There's not enough hope mm -hmm. out there the way it should be. Um, we pass through, like on our way, taking the kids to school. She has younger siblings, so... Yep. We drive to school every day and you see the disparity. You see on one end, you have literally the haves and the have nots. Yes. You don't really see anything in between. And to see that, it's like, okay, how do we inject hope and inspire them to understand that, you know what, you can be a lot greater than what you think you can be. Yes. Um, although over there, it's like, okay, the youth are to be seen and not heard. It's like, okay. If we're to be seen, how do we make that impactful? Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want to hear, but what can we do to get your attention to see like, okay, you know what? These kids have dreams and they need to be materialized. So when she was on TV3, it was like a big deal yes. for a lot of people. We had no idea how much it touched them until, you know, she went viral, viral. for Hip Hop 50th. So it, we're working on some stuff. I can't say too much, but we're working on something where it's not just Ghana, but we really want to touch the continent of Africa. Yes. What I would really like to see in my lifetime is the diaspora pull together and support. Because one of the things that I think we fail at, um, which I'm grateful for your your platform, um, shout out to Philip Scott as well. Yes. Um, all of these platforms like you guys are coming together to highlight what the diaspora is doing. I feel like it's not enough of that. We support the most idiotic things. <laughs> and not enough of seeing great things being done within our communities and highlighting those things. So my hat's off to you for even doing this groundwork. I know it can be tiring. It's probably oh, thank often you. like a thankless job, <laughs> but thank you. Yes, we, yeah, thank you from the whole, our whole heart. Mm -hmm. And then also you mentioned community, which is something that's really important <clears throat> that I wish that both the diaspora and the whole continent of Africa can have a beautiful, strong, and positive community. And we're backing each other up for a better tomorrow, a better future. I mm -hmm. think that's what I really want to see. I, I love it. And I thank you. And Phil thanks you, whatnot. Sometimes I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. So, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know if I didn't know if I was um, recognized as one of the people because people say, oh, you represent so and so. And I never know, like, oh, uh, are you happy with that person? <laughs> you know, but um, Phil is 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 very just very just how he is on cameras, how he is in real life. But I, I'll say this for for when you're in Ghana and you talk about hope, uh, we've offered people jobs all across the continent and sometimes they don't even believe that they'll get paid because they're <laughs> hopeless and when you think about the kids selling plum you know right on the street or beignet puff puff yep. um that you have equipment and the skills to edit you know when the i don't know um Mzungu, Malungu, in Ghana, you guys call them a brony i think it is um, oh, yeah. i'm talking about, I'm talking, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, when 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 they go somewhere, they can go through a ghetto anywhere in the world and just film it and get a hundred thousand likes. We're mm -hmm. already there 
why can't we attach a body cam or some type of camera to our people while they're doing their job before school or after and do the same thing before they do it? Because, mm -hmm. you know, co colonizers are going to colonize and mm -hmm. we have to we have to do that stuff and see where it goes if we can even, you know, um, stop them because <laughs> right? sometimes it's hard. But like yeah. those kids in the street. T risking their life trying to sell you something like that's mm -hmm. content right there and we really need to monetize our lives whatever we're doing so just you know keep those ideas and you'll have better ones oh, no, than that see, uh, you and i are going to have a conversation after <laughs> all of this because you, you're going to learn some interesting stuff that i can't talk about here <laughs> okay well yeah. with with that I thank y'all for listening and making it to the end, whether you were listening or you came over to watch. Um, please be responsible when you're doing either one, whatever platform. And I want everybody to make sure you look in the descriptions, make sure you follow this young lady and her mother, because the best is yet to come. You can like, you can subscribe. But most importantly, I want you to share this game with somebody. It will change their life. Y'all be blessed. Are you tired of the violence, tired of the injustice, police brutality, rampant discrimination, lack of gun control in this failed by a socioeconomic experiment called America? Or maybe you need a break from the relentless grind and want to regain control of your destiny, your wealth, your health, and your purpose. Diversifiedgame.com has the right course for you. Prepare for my first trip to Africa. Looking to reconnect with your roots, start a new business, or just a fresh start. Africa, AKA the motherland is waiting. Don't let the Chinese and the Mazungus have the fun and also take over the motherland. From Cairo to Mombasa, from Dakar to Cape Town, Africa has something for everyone from business opportunities to the most amazing people, safety, leisure, and landscapes. The opportunities abound. It is time for the diaspora to reconnect with their roots. Time to reconnect with the birthplace of humanity. Africa is the last frontier. Get your head in the game and reclaim your legacy. The writing is on the wall. Babylon is falling. Give up the stress, grind and violence inflicted on our people on this continent and prepare for a journey of restoration and joy by connecting with the land of your ancestors. Check out our new course and kick off your adventure at diversifiedgame.com.